Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss CTEV that is congenital telepoequinovirus or also known as club foot. So before that we will cut up and review the uh, anatomy. So basically this is the fibula, this is tibia, this is talus and this joint is known as tibiotalar joint also known as ankle joint. Okay, which movements occur here? Plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Plantar flexion uh, and dorsiflexion. Then this is calcaneum, this is navicular, this is cuboid. Okay, this joint, this one, is talocalcaneal joint, also known as subtalar joint, bit below talus, that is subtalar joint, which movements occur here, inversion and eversion, okay. Then this is the arch of the foot. If the arch of the foot is exaggerated, then it is known as cavus. If it is lost, then it is known as planus, okay. What is varus? Varus is adduction plus inversion and vulgus is abduction plus eversion. Okay, so this was the overview of anatomy. This is the tallow navicular joint or the mid tarsal joint. Okay, which movements occur here? Abduction and adduction. Adduction and abduction, two movements occur here. Now, coming to CTV proper, that is club foot. It is very, very common and it stands for congenital telepo equinovirus. Okay, what is the definition? It is a congenital anomaly of leg, ankle, and foot. Leg, ankle, as well as foot, characterized by there is a mnemonic called as cave. C is for cave us. A is for reduction, B is for virus, E is for equinus. Okay, so this is basically a congenital anomaly. Epidemiology incidence is 1 in 1000 live births, male greater than female, first born child, 50% cases are bilateral, and it is associated with oligodemnias and breeds. In this video, we are going to discuss it in the manner as you are supposed to write in the theory examination, so it will be short and crisp. Etiology primary and secondary, primary is idiopathic, that is uh, multifactorial, there is no conclusive uh, etiology, but uh, the proposed ones are uh, it is hereditary, it is due to increased intrauterine pressure, it is due to oligodemnias, malposition, or rest in development, or bony abnormality, tendon and ligament abnormality. So basically it is multifactorial thing. Then secondary etiology is, it could be paralytic, it could be muscular or traumatic. Okay. In paralytic we see popliteal nerve damage and posterior tibial nerve damage. And uh, polio if we consider then it is cause of acquired, it is not congenital, it is acquired uh, telepo equinovirus. Then spina bifida. Muscular causes if we consider then dystrophy of the peroneal muscles, arthrogyroplasis, multiplex, congenita. Uh, in this, uh, basically there is fibrosis of muscles. Then other causes traumatic. So this was the etiology, primary, secondary, primary multifactorial, secondary paralytic, muscular and traumatic. Coming to pathanatomy, it is very, very important. CAVE as the mnemonic goes, KVS, adduction, whereas equinus. KVS, what is KVS? KVS is basically increase in median longitudinal arc. Medial longitudinal arc is exaggerated. What is adduction? Adduction basically uh, is coming towards the midline of the body. Adduction occurs at tallow navicular joint, we saw in the anatomy. Tallow navicular joint or the mid, mid tarsal joint. Whereas occurs at tallow calcaneal joint or subtarsal joint. Okay? Equinus. Equinus basically occurs at ankle joint. Ankle joint is also known as tibio teller joint okay so this is the image showing cavus that is exaggerated medial longitudinal arc adduction that is movement of the foot towards the midline of the body this is the midline of the body okay this is varus and this is equinus okay this image is on taken from the young arthropods video basically what is the pathology here hypoplastic or small talus is the basic pathology this leads to dislocation of telonavicular joint, which is precipitated also by tendo Achilles, leading to plantar flexion and tibialis poster contraction, leading to inversion. So this here, it is a diagrammatic representation. This is equinus due to contraction of tendo Achilles. This is varus due to contraction of tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longer and flexor digitorum longus. Okay, these all are contracted. Uh, equinus also. The head of the talus gradually dislocates dorsally from the mid tarsal joint, which leads to difficult dorsiflexion, hence there is an opposed plantar flexion also. And here in virus, calcaneum is medially rotated against the talus. So this was the basic pathology, pathoanatomy. Now coming to changes, changes we will be dividing into two, bony changes and soft tissue changes. In soft tissue changes we will be seeing muscles and tendons, ligaments and capsules, vessels and nerves and skin. Bones, what changes we see in bones, talus is hypoplastic as we saw uh, before. The head and neck of the talus, they are deflected downwards and medially. Downwards leads to equinus deformity and medial leads to adduction. Then calcaneum is rotated inwards, which leads to varus deformity. And the vertical height on the medial side of is reduced. Calcaneum ka medial side ka vertical height is reduced, which again leads to adduction. So equinus, adduction, varus. And navicular and cuboid, they are displaced medially. 
So bony changes if you see talus is hypoplastic, head and neck of the talus is deflected downwards and medial and calcaneum is rotated inwards and vertical height is decreased on the medial side while navicular and cuboid they displace medially. Coming to soft tissue changes, muscles and tendons, the plantar flexors that is the calf muscles as well as the inverters that is tibialis posterior and anterior they are shorter leads to deformity in CTE. Tendo Achilles is contracted and it passes downwards and inwards to its insertion leads to equinus deformity. Then coming to ligaments and capsules. Ligaments on the medial aspect of the foot are contracted. The deltoid ligament has a special mention, it also contracts. Coming to vessels and nerves, vessels and nerves on the medial aspect are shortened. The skin changes are very important and clinically they are seen also. Lateral and medial. Lateral, we can see callosities, dimples and scars. Callosities, dimples and scars. And medially we see deep groove, shortening and creases. Deep groove as well as shortening and creases are seen. Okay. This image is also taken from the Young Orthopods video. Coming to clinical features, clinical features, foot is smaller in size, equinus virus and adduction are positive, calcaneum is small and difficult to palpate, bony prominences and callosities are seen on the lateral aspect, contractures and wasting of the calf muscles is seen. Coming to diagnosis, screening test, confirmatory test and clinical. Screening test basically is known as dorsiflexion test. Normally what happens is uh, in the normal newborn baby, when we dorsiflex the foot, the foot, the dorsum of the foot touches the lower end of tibia. Okay. But here in CT we it cannot we cannot dorsiflex the foot of the baby. Okay. This is dorsiflexion test. Now coming to confirmatory test. Confirmatory test basically is an investigation which is X ray. We will take both AP as well as lateral view. In this X ray we see telocalcaneal angle. Sorry, I don't have the image. But basically in AP view and lateral view we see the uh, angle between the long axis of the talus and the long axis of calcaneum which is also known as kites angle normally it is 20 to 45 degree some books says 20 to 40 degree some books says 40 to 45 degree but in CTEV this angle is reduced okay that's the main point kites angle is reduced and clinical as we saw clinical features these are the clinical features then coming to the treatment treatment is very important aim is to correct the deformity and to hold the foot in corrected position till it stops growing okay maintenance or loading dono hi karna treatment gain uh, conservative as well as surgical both are available in conservative we have got famous sponsities method in which we do manipulation plus casting or splinting this will lead to correction of deformity this is known as sponsities method the order of correction in sponsities method is CAVE the same mnemonic K was first corrected then adduction and virus then equinus for the correction fulcrum is chosen uh, head of talus is chosen as the fulcrum okay and the cast is uh, supposed to be replaced every week and five to seven cast approximately are to be applied also the limb needs to be immobilized and so during the daytime we give ctv shoes and during the night time we give dennis brown splint the ctv shoes they are special they have got the inner border which is straight why straight to avoid adduction there is no heel in the shoe to avoid equinus and the outer shoe is raised to avoid inversion okay this is a special type of ctv shoes then coming to surgical options available this is over your treatment basic treatment is age wise you will be seeing that uh, surgical treatment options available are soft tissue operations equinus correction is basically done by tendo achilles elongation and release of posterior capsule of ankle joint and virus correction is uh, correct virus correction is done by lengthening of tibialis posterior and medial talonavicular release and cavus correction is done by plantar release Talus correction is done by medially displaced talus. We reduce it and ho hold it with thin K wires. So this is the overview of soft tissue uh, operations, the surgical methods. Now coming to age-wise management plan of CTEV. Zero to one year we do reduction and uh, maintenance by Ponsatis method. Then one to three years. Now since uh, one to three years, the child uh, since one year has got deformity. The age of presentation is one to three years. Since one year the child has the deformity. The posteromedial soft tissue around the foot is already contracted. Okay, so before manipulation, we need to release the soft tissue. Which one? Posteromedial soft tissue release procedure. Posteromedial soft tissue release procedure. This is known as turcos procedure. Turcos procedure. The structures released are tendo Achilles, tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus, and flexor digitorum longus. It's all correlated with the path anatomy. Once path anatomy is clear, treatment becomes very clear. So these all structures are released. After that, we can manipulate and then hold the thing. Then if the age of presentation is three to five years. Then we are supposed to perform similarly posteromedial soft tissue repair release and uh, plus also we are supposed to perform bony procedure to correct the adduction deformity. The adduction needs to be correct now, corrected now. The procedure is known as Dilbian Evans procedure. Dilbian Evans procedure. Since the adduction becomes bony, we want to correct the adduction. Now we fuse, what we do is we fuse the calcaneum and cuboid. So the lateral part won't grow anymore. Lateral part of the foot won't grow anymore, but the medial part will continue to grow. So the lateral column will be shortened and medial column will be lengthened. This will lead to straightening of adduction. Okay. Basically what we do is we fuse the calcaneum and cuboid. This will lead to stoppage of growth of lateral part of the foot, but the medial part will continue to grow. 
So the medial column will be lengthened and little column will be shortened, which will lead to straightening of the adduction. Now, if the age of presentation is five to eight years, now the varus becomes bony. Previously, the adduction becomes bony. Adduction became bony. Now the varus becomes bony if the age of presentation is after five years. Now here we do open wedge osteotomy, known as Dwyer's osteotomy. D W Y E R Dwyer's osteotomy, in which we basically do PMSTI, that is posterior medial soft tissue release, plus the Van Evans procedure, plus we do osteotomy. Okay. If the age of presentation is eight to ten years, then wedge tarsectomy is to be performed. Wedge tarsectomy, which includes removal of multiple tarsal bones in wedge forms. If the age of presentation is greater than ten years, then the uh, treatment is triple arthrodesis. Triple means three. Arthrodesis means fusion of joints. So three joints are fused. Which are the three joints? First one is talonavicular. Second one is calcaneocuboid. Third is talocalcaneal joint. Okay. And now in this we open the foot, then we correct and then we fuse. Which few? Which three joints? Talonavicular, calcaneocuboid, and talocalcaneal joint. Okay. The most common complication of triple arthrodesis is pseudo arthrodesis of talonavicular joint. If done less than 10 years of age, this is to be done only if 10 years greater than 10 years of age. If less than 10 years of age, then pseudo arthrodesis occurs. The second method in greater than 10 years of age is Ilitharos or uh, joint directional stabilization system. Okay. So this was the video on CTEV. We'll quickly revise it. CTEV. This is the basic anatomy of the foot. CTV also next club foot introduction definition epidemiology then etiology then patho anatomy C A V E then basic pathology then changes bone sense of tissues all changes we are supposed to write then clinical features then diagnosis screening test confirmatory treatment aim is correct deformity and to hold the foot in correct position till it stops to go treatment conservative and surgical conservative we are supposed to write Ponsetti's method Ponsetti's method is really important then age wise management plan we are supposed to write one to three years of age. Three to five years of age, five to eight years of age, eight to ten years of age, greater than ten years of age, zero to one year, positive method, one to three years, PM STR, three to five years, Dilben Ivan procedure, five to eight years, Dwyer's osteotomy, eight to ten years, West Asectomy, greater than ten years, triple arthrodesis. So this was the video on CTE. Thank you so much.